So, we're all ready to uh, do the work uh, on assembling the, uh, the frame now for the pedal board. Uh, for anybody in North America who is not used to it, uh, he uses, I guess, what are called Torx screws. Uh, this is new to me. I'm a woodworker for many years and I guess being in Canada, um, I'm more familiar with Robertson screws than I don't like Phillips screws at all. Um, so these Torx screws are new to me, so I don't have any Torx drivers. So we had to go up and buy something with Torx drivers. And home hardware, and this isn't a plug for, for home hardware, um, they had all of this stuff for $15, which is incredible. And it's got the Torx drivers in it. Now, if I was to buy just one Torx driver, it would probably cost me more than $15. So, it's not a bad deal. So anyhow, we're going to get started on working on this, and uh, we'll bring you back when we're actually getting down to putting it all together, and we'll see how all right, it comes I'm applying out. glue now to the joints, because that's what is recommended. And uh, trying to make sure I get enough glue, but not too much glue. What I did was I marked a little bit with pencil as to where the uh, piece actually comes in contact. You gonna put glue on the board too? Well, I don't need to. It's, it's where it's supposed to be. All right. I guess I can put a little bit on there. Wouldn't hurt. It's just that I'm not quite sure. Well, there we are. But you can put it on here too, up to yeah. the line. Size? Yep. So far, the threading perfectly. All right, so now we're going to put the uh, back section on, and uh, so far everything is fit marvelously. Um, actually, I think I'm quite starting to like the uh, the Torx screws. So just uh, scuff the wood up a bit so the glue makes a good contact. So we're getting ready now to uh, to glue up the, the back section. I've scuffed the wood a little bit to make sure we get a nice good contact on it.
No. Hey, Lily. Are you helping Dad? Mm -hmm. What a good girl. What a good girl. What a good girl. I've switched over to my drill because one thing I don't want is carpal tunnel. So. Love that. So the uh, screws for the top are a little different size, probably because it's just going into this rail here. There's one. And here's two. Okay, so the frame is done. You can see on the underside of all of the pedals there's a number. We have to be careful now that we put them back the way he took them off in the proper numbers. So right now we're looking for number one. Oh, number one's right here. And having made keyboards myself in the past, I know that the, the numbers are very important. So anyhow, there's number one. And we have three things that we have to install with this. So we'll show you the three things in a moment. Oh. That's because they're all magnetic. <laughs> okay, so we need that. Oop. We're putting the pedals onto the pedal board now. And uh, I put the first pedal in because I wanted to get a feel of how it's supposed to be done. I did that off camera. Uh, I'm going to put in now the uh, first sharp comb. And it seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, there are three things that you need for each pedal as you're installing it. Uh, the most important thing is this little screw with a magnet on top of it. And I'm guessing that this is somehow the trigger for the whatever that little thing is there. So anyhow, this just goes into the wood. It pretty much threads by itself. Just put a little driver on it and give it a little bit of a turn. The instructions are a little confusing because he talks about the minimum distance from the tip of the magnet to the reed. I think that this is the reed right in here. That's the reed. He talks about the minimum distance being five point, no, 0.556 of a millimeter and that's an awfully a small amount but what we find is that we can't get even with the the magnet out as far as it'll go and still being firm in the hole we still have a distance of about I would say six or seven millimeters so I'm hoping that that's close enough to trigger this read, I, I don't know. We've flashed an email off uh, to see if we can get a little bit of help on this, but there's no way I can get that magnet any closer than what it is right now without the little screw falling right out of the wood. Okay, so we're fighting with a little spring here, and there's a little hole that the spring has to go into here, like so. And it's kind of tricky to get this thing here and get it so that it will go into the other hole but I think I've got it this seems to be as far as it'll go and then I have to set it at the back so that it's close to the hole where the screw goes and then there we go so far so good and then it just has one screw in the back. 
And there's just a little Phillips screw. Like so. And as you can see, there we go. You got it. But you can see again, that magnet is not terribly close. But having never done this before, I have no idea. So that's how we do the pedal. I'll, I'll try another pedal and see. Well, this is the second day now. We uh, were having some trouble. We were unsure about how far the magnet. Okay, can you see that? Hold on. There. This is the magnet. This is what does everything for us as far as the MIDI trigger is concerned. And the magnet, the little screw, fits in the underside of the pedal like so and we were uncertain as to how far it's supposed to go because the warnings in the booklet are that you have to be careful that you don't crush the reed with the magnet so that's really important that you don't do that but we were getting conflicting information as to how far the actual magnet was supposed to go in. So we, um, we sent a photograph to Alessandro at PMK and he always responds very quickly. He, it's brilliant how fast he is about responding to emails. You, that's the biggest thing why we chose to go with this because he was very attentive to our needs. So anyhow, he made a suggestion that I actually thought might be one way of doing this, and that was to actually hook up the MIDI into our computer so that we can see exactly if the pedal is triggering the MIDI software. And as you can see, we're using Hoftwork for our organ sounds. And we used once you press the pedal we so used the hopwork software as you can see i'm pressing down the low c pedal um, we used the hopwork software to establish the contact with the pedal board and when you get your hopwork software uh, you'll be able to do exactly what we've done it's very easy to do all you do is go into general settings and it, it, it gives you a, a wizard to help you configure your MIDI and that's what we've used here. So what we've done is we've got the, the MIDI working on these pedals and we're going to work pedal at a time and check each time on the software that the pedal is registering properly with the MIDI because not only does it have to trigger MIDI on, it has to trigger MIDI off. So it has to know exactly when to trigger on, trigger off. And I think if you don't get the adjustment right on the magnet, you're not going to get it triggering on and off properly. It may trigger it on permanently or it may not work at all. So this is why we're using the computer and it seems to be a better way to go. So at the moment, we are working across. Be careful because it seems to be that as you move across the, the, the pedal board, the magnets get closer to the reed cell, to the sensor. Be careful that you don't get, you don't crush your reed.